The middle class needs to prepare. A huge cleanse is coming. But I'm going to show you what I think you should be doing. I gotta give in now, I just gotta live this now I be gonna be when I'ma kill this stuff real quick I'ma go take it to town Cause I gotta be that king in the ring And I'm not killing me when I'm back with the bro Cause I am just stuck on the journey You just know that I'm just going to say Warriors, rise, grand rising, good evening warriors all over the world The middle class is coming up to a cleanse. So I'm going to share with you guys exactly what I think is going to happen. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. I'm just document documenting my journey into the quantum financial system. About four years ago, I was on my mom's couch and I've lost my money three times. So if that turns you off, I'm not the guy to watch. But if you're really looking to hear from somebody who finally got their shit together, who understood that the system is rigged and worked harder on himself than he did anything else to understand how the system actually works, then I'm your guy. So I'm going to take you on the facts, figures, numbers, logic, and the journey that I've been on. Now, I do have an education. I was in banking. I uh, went to banking school, CBA executive banking school. I know how to scale banks. I walked out of corporate America in 2017 because I believe the system is completely rigged. And I went on a mission to figure this out, and I lost my money two times in that process. The first time was self-induced 16 years ago. But as I lost my money the third time, I'd ask myself, why? Why do I keep losing my money? I was never educated on how wealth actually works. I was taught to school to get a job, to get a 401k, to get your safe health insurance, get a secure job. But for some reason, my whole life, I've been trying to break free from this box. And finally, in 2017, I went on this journey. When I lost my money for the third time, I went on a mission to figure out what is this system? But it was deep-rooted subconscious mind programming, and I didn't understand how the system works. I realized that by moving back in with my parents and sitting on their couch and sleeping on their couch, that they got all their information from the news. Everything they got was from the media. So when I show you media, that's why I go deeper into facts, figures, numbers, logic. The media is telling you what they want you to hear based on the wealthiest people in the world, the conglomerates that owe the media station. Television programming. You watch a channel, they channel information. The richest people in the world, the six conglomerates, own the media stations. So whatever information they want to give you, they can give you. Okay, you got left, right, biased, Fox, CNN. So, and then you got YouTubers like me, and they censor our stuff as well. But here's the thing. You shouldn't take everything I say as the Bible or the word and financial. What you should do is start to connect with your body and understand that this is nothing new under the sun. So what I'm going to show you is the middle class is about to get wiped out. Leverage source technology. People making 150000 to 250000 a year are starting to live paycheck to paycheck. They printed more money than history since 2009 in Bitcoin's inception, specifically the last 36 months. They will 24 months from 2020 to 2022. Then they turn the printing machine off. So let's take a deep dive on what's actually happening in the system. Okay, so Goldman Sachs and Bank of America expect three more U.S. rate hikes this year. Yes, of course. I'm going to show you what Jerome Powell says. Here's what you should expect. You should expect interest rates to go up in 2023 and 2024, and you should expect them to cool inflation down to 2%. Before I show you anything else, what happens when they bring inflation down and interest rates up? The companies that were surviving off stimulus and low interest rate environment for a very, very long time. Credit markets can work very, very well if you have good policy and you have no greed. We have major jacked up policies and horrible amounts of greed. The country is in a massive debt crisis. Most of our debt is outside the U.S. Okay, We're at 120% debt to income ratio and they turn the printing machine off and they're no longer supporting companies that are in trouble. They're not buying junk bonds. They turned off the printing machine. They raised interest rates. So you can't borrow your way out of trouble. And guess what the most expensive thing is? Employees. So you're going to start to see massive layoffs going into Q3, Q4. You're going to see people getting leveraged source technology coming back to a brand new economy, as Jerome Powell says. So Goldman Sachs is saying there's going to be three more rate hikes this year. Of course there is. That's exactly what's happening. Now, here's the indoctrination narrative. You know, Yahoo News is talking about this. And I'm just going to show you the news and I'm going to show you what Jerome Powell says and what you should expect. Well, Wall Street doesn't think. 
Well, Wall Street doesn't think the Fed fight will be over anytime soon. Goldman Sachs says it is now expecting the Fed to raise interest rates another three times this year, each by a quarter of a percent. These fears have rattled the markets, with the Dow on track for a third consecutive week of losses. And I'm, as I mentioned, you guys, Bank of America also joining in this morning, saying the same thing. Uh, the PPI report yesterday was sort of the straw that broke the camel's back, as, as it were, when it came, comes to Goldman Sachs. Their note was based on PPI, that is input prices, wholesale prices being higher than estimated. And they said that's why they had to raise their uh, ending Fed funds rate target. What's interesting about all of this, of course, is that the Fed has been saying this, right? So we kept asking the question, um, are the markets going to come to the Fed or is the Fed going to come to the markets? And it seems as though we have our answer. The markets are going to come to where the Fed has been. Yeah. Okay. So I actually like her. I like what she said. She said they've been saying this. I like that girl. Good job. Okay, so let's dive into this. Well, let's hear what he's been saying. I want to show you from the horse's mouth. So this is Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve is responsible for the money supply and the job markets and job stability. Okay, so this is him being interviewed and they're talking about the 2% um, inflation and he's going to tell you exactly what they're going to do. But why 2% and not 3%? 3% you know, could be tolerable, really. I mean, most for most of organized history, 3% is considered okay. Why do you want 2%? So 2% is the global standard, and that is our objective, 2% piece as measured by the, the uh, PCE uh, index. And that's just, that's not something we're looking at changing. That isn't going to change. It's that's not going to change. Not going to change now. Okay. So it's not going to change. They're going to 2%. Buckle up. But okay. So you need to get the 2% and your goal to get there is by what period of time? Would you like to get there? Well, we say we say that we're using our tools to get there over time. If you look at our forecasts, we expect 2023 to be a year of significant declines in inflation. And it's actually our job to make sure that that's the case. But I would tell you that, uh, you know, with inflation headline, headline uh, PCE inflation is running about 5%. This is on a 12 month basis. Core is running at a 4.4. My guess is it will take certainly into not just this year, but next year to get down close to 2%. Okay. So 2% is firm. That's you're not going to yes. get off that. Yes. Okay. So, uh, okay. I mean, he's like, it's firm. We're not changing it. The theory of raising interest rates um, is that it will decrease economic activity and increase unemployment, but you've been increasing interest rates for a while and unemployment is now at a record low. So what's wrong with the theory? Why is unemployment not going higher? Well, the, the labor market is strong because the economy is strong. And uh, as I mentioned, it's a good thing that we've been able to see the beginnings of disinflation without seeing the, the labor market weaken. Um, it's just that uh, it, I, there's a lot of demand for workers. In fact, it, if, you, if you look at the supply of workers versus demand for workers, demand for, for U.S. workers is now more than 5 million greater than the available supply. And the available supply consists of people who are either working or actively looking for a job. So okay, so I think it's important to break this down on, this is my understanding. Okay, you guys may have better economics knowledge around this, but so think about if the printing machine was turned on full blast, a lot of companies still have capital from that, right? A lot of companies got better business loans, all this stuff, right? That money is drying up. So there's still a demand for workers, but as interest rates continue to go up, there will be a tipping point where the companies start to run out of money and they can't borrow anymore and they have to start to let people go, right? So he told us he's bringing us down to 2% inflation. So we're going to listen to Ray Dalio, who's one of my absolute favorite economists, Bridgewater Associates. Um, he, I highly recommend you research all this stuff. A lot of my information comes from him. The uh, debt crisis, um, he studied 500 years back. We are in a epic time right now. Epic, epic. Now, after this video, I'm going to share with you what I personally am doing. Okay. Value stability. Lovely idea, isn't it? Not, not, not seen very often. I mean, let's take the UK. Hardly stable. I, I think, I think the, uh, you have to understand the mechanics, the cause effect. It's a very basic thing. When you produce a larger deficit, you have to sell your bonds. You have to know who the buyers of the bonds are. If, if you don't have enough buyers of the bonds, you're going to have a buyer's strike. So you're going to, they're going to sell off 
And this is, I think, what's happening, what's happened in the UK is a uh, canary in the coal mine. That if you take what's happening in Europe as a whole, the level of interest rates relative to the level of the inflation rates and the terrible choice that has to be made about if you raise interest rates, what does that mean to Italy's debt service payments? Who is going to make up that difference? There's just mechanics to this. So I think that there's, we are in a situation generally where there's not coordination. You could take the monetary policy of Japan and it'd be totally different there's monetary policy. And so, but there's still a trade-off because the bonds are gonna go down in value because they're not gonna own them. Now the question is, do they go down in value because the currency goes down in value? or because the bond price goes down in value, but one way or another, they're gonna go down in value. And is so it, the, interest rate, yeah. the interest rate now with all of this debt and how it's been structured when all money was free and interest rates were low, now an interest rate that is high enough to deal with inflation and also high enough to provide an adequate return for the bond investor is too high of an interest rate for the debtor. So now we have that structural trade-off and the, and the dominoes are falling in a very, very classic way. For example, if you take high yield investing, they were, high, they were called high yield before they were uh, and ri therefore risky, before you had an interest rate change. Now you have the risk-free rate go up to 4% and you have the credit spreads go up to 5%. Now they have a 9% interest rate. That won't work for those. So they are going to have, the, they're going to be the first ones to go. And you have this series of dynamics. That's the mechanics. So basically, I, I highly recommend you dive into Ray Dalio stuff. So we're, if you look at the, the, um, uh, the debt crisis, right? You look at his, basically looks back 500 years, right? So basically what we're sitting in, in our lifetime, let me pull myself back up on the screen here. What we're sitting in our lifetime hasn't happened in our living history, right? So we have a war narrative. Okay. There's usually some type of narrative in order to move us, whether you believe in the narrative or not. We have a war narrative. There's war going on. Very sad. People's lives are at risk. We have a climate change narrative. We have a socio geopolitical narrative at the same time that America is at 120% debt to income ratio. All the debt is most of the debt is not most of the debt. 33% is held outside the United States. They turned off the printing machine. The money supply is collapsing. Interest rates are going up. You know, people are investing in American dollars in other countries because we're smashing their economy. But what happens? What goes up must come down. So as interest rates go up, the U.S. dollar's value goes up. OK. And then when that goes up, at some point, they're going to pull profits. And at the same time, most countries are working to de-dollarize as we're moving into ESG, which I'm going to dive into my video tomorrow environmental social governance so what can you do during this time okay one thing is you need to create a budget number one you got to create a budget okay you have to look at your frivolous spending cut out all frivolous spending i was on my parents couch four years ago i cut out all frivolous spending i got my shit together i understand how wealth actually worked i diversified i diversified in crypto and then i realized that just being diversified in one asset class is not good enough i learned how to be a fundamental intrinsic value investor i invest in fundamental intrinsic value cryptocurrencies that are going to change the world. If I pick a few winners, I'll be in great shape in the next 24 to 36 months. Number two is I started companies. I started, I used TikTok. I used Instagram. I started companies. I now own equity in multiple companies based on education. Okay. You can do the same thing. There's, there's a whole new world with web three. Okay. Self-development. As I dove into self-development, I worked harder on myself. I spent over a hundred thousand dollars on my self-development the last three years, almost three years, and it's completely changed my life. Precious metals, leveraged life insurance, you can get into pre-IPO. Okay. Now, why am I saying this right now? Because it's so important because assets are going to come collapsing down, in my opinion, on the back of this year. And that's the greatest time in human history to become wealthy. Okay. As everybody's panicking, you should be buying. As everybody's celebrating, you should have an exit strategy and you should be selling. Do the opposite. I was following the 99% and the sheep off a cliff. That's why four years ago, I ended up on my parents' couch once again. I, you know, I had some stuff happen. COVID shut our business down. You know, there's too many details personally that happened. But I finally was like, enough is enough. Enough is enough. And all I'm doing is taking you guys through my journey. That's it. 
And I'm an educator now. I educate people on my journey. I tell people exactly the steps that I did it. That's what our Warrior Academy is. You can join for free, seven days for free for 2020, seven days for free in 2023. If you want to coach with me privately, click the link down below to, to interview. Um, but it, that's that's basically what it is. So that's why I'm openly transparent and honest with people because I worked in banking, guys. There's people sitting in the banking suits that are selling you products and services. A lot of them aren't that wealthy. They're driving cars to impress you, to make it look like they have a ton of money. They have houses they can't afford. They're over leveraged. Okay. They're selling you products and services that benefit the bank because there's large trips attached to that. There's bonuses attached to that. That's how the monetary system works. It's how a lot of all things work. Insurance companies work, right? They're all based on monetary gain and structure and commission. And that's how the sales system works. Okay. So you have to really identify the people you're working with. Where is their integrity? Where is their honesty at, right? If you're going to Bank of America, they're not going to sell you products that Wells Fargo has. Wells Fargo is not going to sell you products that Chase has. But why don't they talk about leveraged life insurance? You know, why don't they tell you to go invest in precious metals? No, they tell you to get a credit card. They tell you to get an auto loan for, you know, for like in 40, 76 months. And they tell you to bury yourself in debt. They don't teach you or find, ed educate you how to be financially wealthy. They don't teach you about leveraged life insurance. They don't tell you about diversification. You know, they put you in the 401k and they, you know, they manage it. And you have no clue what's going on. Right. And then when the market comes collapsing, no, oh, it's just a market condition, just a market condition. Well, they're already set up. The banks are set up. They're saving themselves. They're getting ready to go. So that's what I did is I started to look at how the system works. Do I have a perfect plan? Works for me. I don't know if it's perfect, but it damn well has saved my freaking ass the last three years. So anyways, that's what I have for you guys today. I love you guys. I appreciate you. I'm going to keep bringing this information um, and I hope it reaches you and your family well. So um, I'm just like you guys. I'm not, I'm not some, you know, crazy, uh, you know, so, some guy with, you know, a billionaire walking around in mansions, stuff like that. I'm just somebody who who has principles, integrity, and finally got my shit together and is sharing it with people. So love you guys. Appreciate you. Warriors, rise. Get your shit together.